Hello and welcome back to this channel. This is the last topic of unit number 5 of the subject electronic circuits. Dear students, this topic is square and triangular wave generator. First part is square wave generator. From the exam point of view, we may expect the question like this. Draw and explain the square wave generator using op-amp. So, we will discuss the circuit which generates square wave as well as we will discuss how the square wave waveform is generated. So, this is the diagram which is used to generate the square wave signal. This is the capacitor C which is connected to inverting terminal of op-amp. Voltage across capacitor is VC. At the inverting terminal, this point, this point's voltage is V2. This is non-inverting terminal or positive terminal. This voltage is V1. Same point is over here. So this is voltage V1. Observe the diagram. This, this is the output voltage V0. It is taken back. So this is the feedback connection. And you are getting some voltage V1. No doubt this V1 will be proportional to V0. But this proportionality will be divided, uh, will be decided by resistance. R1 and R2. This VD represents the difference voltage between negative and positive terminal. So it is given by V1 minus V2 because V1 is applied at non-inverting terminal that is positive terminal and V2 is applied at inverting terminal that is negative terminal. Now we will discuss the generation of this square wave based on different time slots. So first time slot 0 to T1. Now refer this diagram. Initially we will assume that there is no initial voltage across the capacitor. So voltage across the capacitor is 0. That means voltage at point V2 is 0. Now always and always in practical cases there is some offset output voltage existing in case of op-amp. This offset output voltage will be paired back at this point V1. So you are getting some voltage. Let us say this voltage initially is positive voltage. So we will assume that certain positive voltage is initially present at point V1. This point is same as the point which is connected at non-inverting terminal. It indicates that V1 is having some positive value whereas V2 is 0 initially that is at T is equals to 0. This op-amp is high gain operational amplifier. So it either produces plus V saturation or minus V saturation depending on the input applied to this op-amp. What we discussed initially V2 is 0, V1 is having some positive value. So Vd will be positive due to this output of op-amp that is V0 will be plus V saturation. So initially I have marked this line that represents plus V saturation. Now, due to this, since this voltage is plus V saturation, observe this diagram, this same voltage is applied through this branch and you are getting plus V saturation at the output. Look at the diagram, due to this plus V saturation, now this voltage is plus V saturation. Due to this, the capacitor will charging like this, following this path. So, capacitor starts charging from zero to let us say some typical value T1. So this line, this uh, diagram, this waveform, which is exponential curve drawn with red ink, this represents the charging of capacitor. Why the capacitor starts charging? Because initially we got this voltage is plus V saturation. Because of this, the capacitor will start charging. Since this capacitor is charging, the voltage at V2 starts increasing, which was initially zero. At one time period, let us say T1 or after T1, this value of V2 becomes slightly more than V1. So, we will talk for the next time period that is T1 to T2. What we discussed up till now from 0 to T1, the voltage is plus V saturation and capacitor will start charging. Now, from T1 to T2, the point at which this voltage V2 becomes more than V1. Why it becomes more? Because capacitor is continuously charging. So when, the, when this point's voltage becomes more, that means negative points, negative terminal's voltage will be more than positive terminal's voltage. At that time, V output will be shifted from V saturation, plus V saturation to minus V saturation. Before that, this voltage V1 
can be calculated by using the voltage division formula. This voltage is V0. Initially, we discussed from 0 to T1. It was plus V saturation, this voltage. So, I will write this value as V saturation into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. In the earlier video also, I have explained you the formula of voltage division. Let us refresh it once again. Voltage division is V1 is voltage across R1. So, formula is supply voltage. Supply voltage is this voltage, which is plus V saturation into that resistance. That resistance means this resistance ke across hamlo voltage calculate kar rahe. So, into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. This is the value of V1. So, what I was talking about, when this, the capacitor is started charging, whenever this point's voltage V2 becomes more than V1, negative point's voltage becomes more than positive point's so positive terminal voltage. So, this V0, which was plus V sat, now suddenly changes to minus V saturation. This happens during time period T1 to T2, once this negative terminal voltage becomes more than positive terminal voltage. Because of this, this voltage becomes minus V saturation. Now, due to this minus V saturation, this V1 becomes minus V saturation into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. This is the value of voltage when voltage V1, when this output voltage becomes minus V saturation. So, you are getting minus uh, sub, some negative voltage at this point. This is happening during the time period T1 to T2. This minus V saturation voltage is denoted over here from T1 to T2. Now, when this output voltage becomes minus V saturation, capacitor starts discharging like this, following the same path, but arrow will be in opposite direction compared to the earlier case. So, capacitor will start discharging. This discharge of capacitor is shown from time period T1 to T2. Now, the point at which this V2 becomes more negative than V1 because capacitor is continuously discharging. Then when this voltage V2 becomes more negative than V1, then Vd is V1 minus V2. So, minus of minus become plus. That means the cycle repeats. So, after that, the value switches to plus V saturation and again it switches to minus V saturation. This is the way how the square wave is generated. Every time for a T on time period, capacitor starts charging whenever output voltage is plus V saturation. Whenever output voltage is minus V saturation, capacitor starts discharging. This is minus V saturation and the cycle repeats. This is T on and T off period of the square wave. Total time period is denoted by T. The formula to calculate the total time period T of a square wave signal is 2 into RC, where R is value of this feedback resistor, C is value of capacitance, log to the base E. This log to the base E is also denoted by ln, natural log, in the bracket 1 plus beta upon 1 minus beta. Beta is called feedback factor, which is given by R1 upon R1 plus R2. So, this is the equation to calculate the time period of square wave signal. Next part is triangular wave generation. To generate a triangular wave, we are using comparator and integrator. This is the op-amp which is used, which is working as a comparator. Negative terminal is directly connected to ground. That means this is ideally zero hold. So, this voltage at positive point is continuously compared with zero volt. This voltage at the positive terminal, that is non-inverting terminal, is connected at point A and this voltage, I mean output of comparator, is denoted by Vb. So, according to this voltage Vb, value of voltage at positive terminal of this op-amp of the comparator will change. Now, Whenever this positive terminal's voltage becomes slightly more than uh, zero hold, because negative terminal is connected to zero hold, output of this first op amp, that is output VB, will be at plus V saturation. Initially, let us say this is the output which is at uh, positive V saturation. Whenever positive signal, I mean positive V saturation voltage is applied to the integrator. This is the integrator circuit. We have already studied in detail the operation of integrator circuit. So, whenever this plus V saturation is applied to this integrator, then integrator 
produces negative going ramp like this at the output V0. Observe the diagram. This V0 is connected as a feedback to R2 as well as at point A. So you are getting a negative going uh, a ramp like this. Remember it like this. Jb voltage plus V saturation hota to negative ramp aata hai. Whenever voltage becomes minus V saturation, you will get a positive ramp. Now you are getting a negative ramp voltage like this. So this voltage will start moving towards negative value. So whenever this reaches to the negative value, this negative voltage, I mean uh, this feedback voltage which is negative is applied to positive terminal of this op amp. Negative terminal of this op amp is already connected to ground. So output of comparator will be minus V saturation like this. So from this point output changes to minus V saturation. Whenever negative voltage is applied to this integrator, it produces a positive ramp. Likewise, the cycle repeats. So this is the circuit which generates a triangular wave signal. Let us solve the numerical. Design a square wave generator using op amp for frequency 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz with 50% duty cycle. We have studied the square wave generator. This is the diagram of square wave generator. Now, as far as numericals are concerned, almost every numerical is same. Only values will be changed. So, in this numerical, value of feedback factor beta is not given so we need to initially assume certain value of beta so let us say beta is equals to 0.05 it is not given in the question so we are assuming this value now we have the formula beta is equals to r1 divided by r1 plus r we have considered the value of beta but again we are getting one equation and two unknowns are there r1 and r2 so again consider any one of the resistors let us say r1 is 1 kilo ohm i am considering any standard value so put this value in this equation so i can write 0.05 that is value of beta we which we are assumed because it is not given in the question similarly we have considered standard value of r1 that is 1 kilo ohm so i am not making any conversion into ohms i am keeping it as it is so 1 divided by 1 plus r2 Simplify this equation a cross multiplication yellow so it is 0.05 into 1 that is first term will be 0.05 then 0.05 into r2 is equals to 1 therefore 0.05 r2 is equals to 1 minus 0.05 therefore r2 is equals to 1 minus 0.05 upon 0.05 so if you solve this on the calculator then value of r2 will be 19 kilo ohm this is the value of resistance r2 now we have to design the values of capacitor c and this resistor r in case of this particular circuit value of capacitor is not given in the question so again we need to consider some suitable value let us say C1 is equals to 1 microfarad. This is the assumed value. Now we have the formula of T. We know that T is 1 by frequency. And for a square wave, formula is 2RC log to the base E in the bracket 1 plus beta upon 1 minus beta. Do remember this is log to the base E. It can be well written as LN, natural log. And we know that T is 1 by F. But two frequencies are given. First frequency is 1 kilohertz. Second frequency is 10 kilohertz. So first calculation for 1 kilohertz. Now if you put this value 1 kilohertz. Then T. Here I write T will be 1 upon 1 kilohertz. Means 10 raised to 3. 10 raised to 3 hertz. So this is 10 raised to minus 3. So I can write this value as. 10 raised to minus 3 is equals to 2 R. I am keeping R as it is into C. C is 1 microfarad. 1 microfarad is 1 into 10 raised to minus 6. Log to the base E inside the bracket. Ye T ka value I put kiya hai pe. 10 raised to minus 3 inside the bracket. 1 plus 0 0.05 upon 1 minus 0 0.05. Now we need to calculate value of R. So R can be written as. Uh, ye pure term. Baki sub term. 
LHS में ट्रांसफर कर लो सो इट इज टेन रेस टू माइनस थ्री अपॉन टू इंटू वन इंटू टेन रेस टू माइनस सिक्स इंटू लॉक टू द बेस ई वन प्लस पॉइंट नॉट फाइव अपॉन वन माइनस पॉइंट नॉट फाइव सो दिस गिवस वैल्यू ऑफ आर इफ यू सॉल्व दिस ऑन द कैलकुलेटर देन यूल गेट वैल्यू ऑफ आर दैट इज इक्वल्स टू फोर नाइन नाइन फाइव फोर नाइन नाइन फाइव पॉइंट एटी थ्री ओ हम सो अप्रोक्सिमेटली वी कैन टेक दिस वैल्यू एज फाइव किलो ओ हम दिस इज वैल्यू ऑफ आर फॉर वन पर्टिकुलर फ्रीक्वेंसी देखो प्रॉब्लम में वेरिएशन क्या हो सकता है इसमें दो फ्रीक्वेंसीज दिए इंस्टेड ऑफ दैट इफ ओनली वन फ्रीक्वेंसी इज गिवन वील हैव टू डू द कैलकुलेशन अप टू दिस पॉइंट ओनली बट टू फ्रीक्वेंसीज आर गिवन सो लेट अस डू द कैलकुलेशन फॉर अनदर फ्रीक्वेंसी दैट इज टेन किलो हॉर्स वॉट विल बी द चेंज यहां पे जो टी का वैल्यू हमने टेन रेस टू माइनस थ्री लिखा था दैट विल बी चेंज इन दिस केस टी विल बी वन बाय एफ दैट इज वन बाय टेन किलो हर्ट्स मीन टेन ए टेन इंटू टेन रेस टू थ्री हर्ट्स विच इज टेन रेस टू माइनस फोर मतलब इस प्लेस में सिर्फ टेन रेस टू माइनस फोर आएगा रिमेनिंग ऑल कैलकुलेशन विल बी सेम सो दिस गिवस वैल्यू ऑफ आर फॉर टेन किलो हर्ट्स यू आर गेटिंग वैल्यू ऑफ आर is 498.58 so you can again uh, approximate this value so that is approximately equals to standard value of 5 kilo ohm so we are getting two values of resistance one is 5 kilo ohm another is 500 ohm sorry 500 ohm it is not kilo ohm it is 500 ohm so we have to use a variable register because we have two values of r that's why here r is shown as a pot that is variable resistance in the earlier diagram we had shown ye ground hai yahan pe in the earlier diagram we have shown r2 is variable but in this case two frequencies are given and i am getting two values of r so r is shown as a variable resistance so this is the way how to solve numericals as far as this square wave generation is concerned as i said लिमिटेड वेरिएशन आर देयर सिर्फ एक फ्रीक्वेंसी दिया रहेगा तो एक ही वैल्यू आर टू का कैलकुलेट करना है एंड आफ्टर डूइंग दिस कैलकुलेशन ड्रॉ द डायग्राम एंड राइट द वैल्यूज ऑफ कॉम्पोनेंट इन द डायग्राम फॉर एग्जाम्पल ये कैपेसिटर सी है उसका वैल्यू हमने पॉइंट वन माइक्रोफेरेट कंसिडर किया था ये लिखता हूं यहां पर दिस इज फाइव हंड्रेड ओहम टू फाइव किलो ओहम यू कैन वेल राइट वेरिएबल रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ फाइव Fixed, re you can well use fixed resistance of 500 ohm and variable resistance of 5 kilo ohm. Then value of R2, value of R2 we have calculated that is this value 19 kilo ohm, and value of R1 we consider it as 1 kilo ohm. So this is the final diagram of square wave generator. So dear students, that's it for today's session. So thank you, thanks a lot for watching this video.